In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to 3D model the Titan 7M. Let's first take a look at our blueprint. Sheet number one of our blueprint gives us kind of the basic shape. Um, this is a, an irregular shape here. Um, this is the only way I could describe it. Sheet number two, we have some counterboard holes. And then sheet number three, we have this kind of a offset feature. And then that offset feature is mirrored onto both sides. So let's jump over to Fusion 360 and make this part. I'm into Fusion 360. And as I mentioned before, um, this is kind of an irregular shape part. The, there's several different ways to make this part. Um, you can make this part out of lines, a series of lines, um, or you can make it out of a rectangle and add some lines into it to kind of break it up. I'm actually going to start with a rectangle. So I'm going to go R on the keyboard. We're going to be choosing our top plane here and then make sure that you are referencing off of the origin. So left click on the origin and then drag your mouse out. The height of our rectangle is going to be 1 inch 950 thousandths. Hit tab to go to the next dimension. And the length of our rectangle is going to be 4 inches 375 thousandths. We have our rectangle here. Now we're going to add some geometry in here to kind of break it up. I'm going to draw a straight line down, a line at an angle, and then a horizontal line kind of snapping it to the other side of my rectangle. With that in place, all I need to do is add in my dimensions, referencing always back to our datum location. This one is going to be 3 inches, 125 thousandths. The end point here is going to be 2 inches, 375 thousandths. And then now our vertical measurements, this one's at one inch, 200 thousandths. And then this point in here is at 475 thousandths. Notice that all of our lines have turned black, meaning that they are fully constrained. I'm going to right click and press and pull. And I'm going to press and pull this area. I'm disregarding this area right now. And the thickness of our part is 750 thousandths. And then enter. Now that I have my geometry in place, or my solid body in place, I'm going to add some corner fillets in here. So modify down to fillet. First two fillets I'm going to deal with is this fillet here and this fillet here. According to the print, these are 375 thousandths, which is 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to right click and repeat. And then we have five fillets that are running on the outside of our part, which are 100 thousandths of an inch. Moving on to sheet number two of our blueprint. Sheet number two goes over some hole locations. We're going to create a new sketch on top of our part. So create sketch and make sure you're clicking on the top of the part and not on the planes over here. We're going to go to create and down to point. We're going to land three points on the bottom and then one point above it. These points share some relationships with each other. The three points on the bottom are all horizontal to each other, and the two points on the end are vertical to each other. So we're going to add in some horizontal and vertical constraints, just like that. Now that our constraints are in place, we're going to add some dimensions in, always referencing off of our datum location. 
Measurement from the datum to the three points on the bottom is one inch, 575 thousandths. The measurement to the first point from the datum is 375 thousandths. Measurement from the second point to the datum is one inch, 750 thousandths. And the last points to the datum are four inches. One measurement I missed because notice that this point is white but the other ones are black in color is I did miss the vertical measurement here and this one needs to be 375 thousandths. So that's a good technique is make sure you're looking at your points and make sure they're all black in color. Now that we have our points located, we're going to press H on the keyboard for hole, and we're going to choose those four points. If you look at the drawing, there's um, a call out for our holes, and you'll see it says 4X, this U shape, which is actually uh, the GD and T symbol for a counter bore. And the counterboard diameter is 380 thousandths and goes down 315 thousandths into the part. The hole that the bolt goes through is 250 thousandths and that goes through the entire part. So we're going to set that up over here in our pop-up window. Our hole type is going to be counterboard. This does not have any threads in it, so it's going to be simple and a, we are using a drill bit to drill this hole. The, di the distance for the actual hole, it goes all the way through, so we're gonna extend through all. The counter board diameter, as I stated before, is 380 thousandths, and the counter board depth is 315 thousandths. So this would be um, if you wanted to stick a like a socket cap screw in that hole. The diameter of the hole is 250 thousandths. And all that information is updated. Make sure yours looks like mine and then press OK. So notice we have our counter bore, like I mentioned, uh, this particular shape is designed for like a socket cap screw to fit into. We're moving on to sheet number three. Sheet number three has this kind of a, a weird shape going on it. Um, we are going to use an offset on this. So O on the keyboard for offset. We're going to click on the top of the part. Make sure you're not clicking on those planes again. We're going to click on the outside profile of our part and drag this in. And it says that the offset on this is 125 thousandths. So I'm going to type in negative 125. And just like before, what I'm going to do is after I have my geometry in place, I'm just going to add in some lines over here. So L on the keyboard doesn't matter where my lines are, are taking place. I'm just going to add in some geometry just like this. Now the endpoint over here, I made that uh, coincident to the endpoint of this arc. And then afterwards, I'm going to make this line perfectly horizontal by adding a horizontal constraint. And then I'm going to add in some dimensions to everything. D on the keyboard, we're going to start looking at this dimension here. According to the print, this needs to be 500 thousandths. From our datum over here to this endpoint, the vertical measurement needs to be 625 thousandths. And then we're ready to go. We're going to right click, press and pull. And unfortunately, 
we may have, looks like we have an error here. Yep, and I see where the error is. If I zoom in, you see that this line or this endpoint is not coincident to the line out here. Even though it shows a coincident constraint, we're going to come in and fix that. I'm going to delete that line and then add in a new line. This particular line, I'm going to add it in and make it a little on the short side so I can force that coincident. There we go. And then I'm going to add in a vertical horizontal constraint and then add back my dimensions. And let's see if that helped us out. Yep, that fixed our issue. So if you're having some issues, kind of zoom in and look at <coughs> your endpoints of your lines. This particular one, we're going to select those two areas and we're going to press and pull those two areas down. And those two areas are going to be down minus 250 thousandths. After we press and pull those areas down, we're going to add our corner fillets into these two areas here. So modify down to fill it. I'm going to click on this edge here, orbit our part, and click on this edge. And these need to be radius to 275 thousandths. We're going to right click and repeat our fillet. There's a fillet that resides right on this sharp edge here. And that one needs to be at 25 thousandths. Right click and repeat again. And then on the outside five edges, we have another fillet. So I'm just kind of orbiting the part around until we have our five edges. And then we're going to radius those to a hundred thousandths. Almost done with this part. On this particular part, what we're going to use is we're going to use some of the examples from some of our previous videos. And we're going to mirror all this geometry that we just chose as some features. To do this, we're going to have to use a construction midplane, so we're going to add that in now. Up to your toolbar where it says construct and down to midplane. We're going to click on the top of the part, orbit our part, and then click on the very bottom of the part. And we have this tan kind of salmon colored plane appear exactly in the center. And then we're going to hit OK. We're going to go to create and down to mirror. The pattern type, we're going to pattern features. And the features that we're going to find are going to be located in our history markers. Well, what we're going to pattern is the extrude and these two, uh, three corner fillets. In our pop-up window, we're going to choose our mirror plane. And then we're going to choose the construction plane we just created. And then press OK. Afterwards, we can turn the visibility of the construction plane off with the eyeball. And then you can orbit your part around and see that the other side is an exact replica. Almost done with this part. I always save my chamfers till the end. On this particular part, this edge and the edge down here have a chamfer of 50 thousandths. So modify down to chamfer. We're going to click on those two edges here and chamfer those at 50 thousandths.
The rest of our part gets chamfered at 10 thousandths. So right click and repeat. We're gonna click on the top of the part and the bottom of the part and the bottom of these holes. And if we go back to sheet number two, it says that the chamfered diameter on this hole needs to be 400 thousandths. Well, the hole diameter here was 380 thousandths. So if we add 10 thousandths on each side, that'll give us 400 thousandths. So we're also gonna include these holes. And then we're going to type in our measurement of 10 thousandths and enter. This is a good opportunity. Double check your part. Make sure you got all the chamfers in, all your fillets in. And this concludes how to make the Titan 7M Infusion 360.